Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. It's time once again for a weekly wrap up, a little channel update. And this week I'm gonna talk about how right now my channel is literally hanging by a thread. This is a utility pole around the corner from me that my fiber optic lines are attached to. And as you can see, the utility company in fixing a telephone pole attached the old one to the new one with a rope. And we're gonna talk about what a mess my local area is and how deficient my local utility companies are. Let's get to it. Now, before we jump into the topic, I did want to give you a brief channel update. It's been pretty busy around here, especially with all the traveling I was doing for the Artemis One launch. Thankfully, that went off finally, so I can get back to work here. And I've produced a lot of different types of content since the last wrap-up video that we did. And I compiled all of it in this playlist that you can click on in case you missed something. Uh, we did everything from setting a network-attached storage device on fire to looking at the best box for Plex, along with a lot of other stuff too. And of course, we've got even more coming up this week. And speaking of this week, we're going to be taking a look at Lenovo's gaming Chromebook. I shot that video yesterday, and that will be up in a little bit. We're also going to do my monthly sponsored video from Plex. And this month, we're going to look at some new parts of the Plex interface, but I am actually interested in working on something related to subtitles, which I know are really important to a lot of you. So I'd love to hear some comments in the comment stream about some of the challenges you're facing with subtitles and maybe some ways I can help alleviate some of those issues. So definitely give me some feedback on that for next month's video. And also I'm working on a video with Synology on snapshot replication and general backup. We have done uh, two videos with them so far about backing up things within your home or institution. And now we're going to look at backing up the entire NAS with two different strategies. So that one is almost ready to get going. So I will keep you posted on that. And of course, I've got a bunch of stuff that comes in all the time. So I'm sure I'm going to have something that will uh, also jump into the mix here that is not on the list. So let's take a look now at why my business is literally hanging from a thread right now. Uh, on Friday night, the day after Thanksgiving, I saw all of the fire trucks in town racing to the end of my road. I was very concerned that perhaps one of my neighbor's houses had caught fire. I was smelling something burning outside, but it turns out it was the utility pole around the corner from me. Apparently a tree touched a wire and a fire erupted and they had to not only shut the power down, but also pull the pole out of the ground and replace it with another one. Now, my poles are owned by the power company in Connecticut called Eversource. And if you want to hear how awful of a company they are, you can watch this video that I did about a year and a half ago. It's still all very relevant today. And I had made this video when we lost power for over a week from a very minor storm, which unfortunately has become kind of par for the course with this company. They put profits ahead of customers. And speaking of putting profits ahead of customers, that is exactly what happened here. So the pole caught fire. They took the pole out, but they cut the top and the bottom off of it where the communication cables were, and they tied it to the new pole, as you can see. And this was their solution for fixing the problem. Now, I don't know if they tried to coordinate with the cable company and the phone company to get them to reattach their cables, but things never used to be this bad. Everyone used to come out when there was an emergency and fix the problem right the first time. But now everybody can just point their fingers at each other and say, oh, it's not my problem, it's their problem. And they all just walk away from it. And usually what happens in my area is that things remain this way for a really long time. We are now, I think, about three days out from this incident and the poll still looks like this. And what's really crazy is that this week, Frontier is in my area running new fiber optic cables, and I don't know if they even know that this problem is waiting for them when they get to this part of the street. Everything is working for now, but this is certainly not very safe. And of course, these are fiber optic cables running at least on the Comcast rung there, and those wires are very delicate. They also have some coax there, as you can see on the left, but the fiber backhaul that comes from my area back out to the cable head end is also bundled with the coax there. So you can see those two coax cables going off, but that fiber cable is running all the way back to the head end. Now here in my home state of Connecticut, we've had some issues with utility companies not meeting their obligations to customers. And thankfully, under new leadership, our local regulator is starting to get some teeth. And one of the things they did last summer 
uh, was put together a decision about dealing with compromised utility poles, including what they should do when a, a pole needs to be removed and replaced. And basically they said that the licensee, in other words, the person attaching things to the pole, shall have its attachment removed and transferred within three days of the replacement pole being set. Uh, we are at the three-day mark right now. In fact, we've passed it already. And of course, my poll still looks like it does out there. And part of me wonders if, because they cut the poll in half, if this kind of makes this rule kind of not apply here, because theoretically, there is no poll anymore. There is only one poll with the portion of the old one attached to it. And some people say, oh, it's not the power company's problem. They're not supposed to touch the wires. But meanwhile, they touch the wires enough to cut the old pole in half and hang it back up again. So I don't buy this argument that uh, they're not to touch the wires. They certainly touch the wires and assume some liability. They could have dropped the whole pole when they were tying it together like this. Now, this is not the only pole in my neighborhood that looks like this. Right next to the one we were just looking at is this monstrosity that is being strapped together with some kind of two by four driven into the ground that was attached to the pole to help keep it up. And this has been like this for a couple of years now. No one's come by to fix it. And you'll see there to the right, the power company did put in a new pole for their wires, but the communication cables from Comcast and Frontier were never moved to the new pole. And this is one of these things where everybody just points the finger at each other saying, well, it's not my job, it's not my problem, it's their problem. And meanwhile, the customers are dealing with a blighted pole in their neighborhood that has structural integrity issues and nothing's getting fixed. And if these companies actually focused on the customers that they serve versus themselves, they would see this as a problem that they all have to solve jointly as opposed to just pointing the finger at somebody else. And the reason why we had to have new regulations put in place is because nobody was doing the right thing. And at this point, those regulations haven't done much to solve this particular poll problem. And this is not the only one around me. I didn't go out looking for these examples. These are things that I pass by every day when I take my kids to school. So here's another one. Uh, this one got hit by a car, as you can see. And similar to the one we were just looking at, they drove some wood into the ground to try to keep it in place here. But they also put in a new pole next to it and transferred the uh, power lines over, as you can see here. But the communication wires are still on the old pole. Again, no coordination. And the crazy thing was is that as I was taking a look at this pole, an Eversource truck happened to drive by and he got out of town real quick when he saw me out shooting some video. So it's not like they don't see this every day, it's just they choose not to deal with any of it. Uh, these poles may have been owned by the phone company, but it doesn't matter. They're just not coordinating with each other. And to be honest with you, I don't care whose poles they are, they should be fixing them. Here's one that is right next to the one we were just looking at. That piece of wood there is cracking out of it because this one was also hit by a car. And rather than do the right thing, this is what we're dealing with here on a very busy main road in town. Again, nobody seems to care much about it. Here's another one on that same road. This one is another one that's strapped together. This one's owned by the phone company. So it looks like both the phone company and the power company share notes on the kind of straps to use to hold things into place. This has been like this now for several years, and I don't know how long these straps are designed to work in the weather, but this certainly doesn't look like something that is a permanent fix, and all it's going to take is the right set of conditions here, or maybe those metal uh, things there to rust out for it to fall apart and go into the road and take the power lines with it. Again, just complete dereliction of responsibility. This is my favorite one that I pass quite frequently. Now, this is a pole that they did finally move the cables on recently. Um, for a long time, this pole was holding up communication cables, even though it was taken out head on by a car here, as you can see. But they never bothered to get rid of the old pole. They just left it there. So you got this ugly blighted thing and, and there's a house right across the street from it. I'm sure they love looking at that every day. Now these are just a few examples that I pass by every day. I'm sure there are many more around my town and of course across the state of Connecticut. Additionally, I've heard from people from other states who have this happening where they are too. So clearly the industry as a whole is just not focused on doing the right thing for customers, even though they have a monopoly and even though they are making money with electric lines that are on public and private property that they can use essentially for free. And I think it's time that they start recognizing that they do serve the public and perhaps we should have a higher priority 
than their profits. And just on this topic, and just to show you what the culture is of these companies, I want to play a quick clip that came from a 2020 hearing on this storm that we had that knocked out power for a week across the state of Connecticut. And here you're going to hear the former CEO of Eversource answer what his priorities are in his job. Have a listen. What would you say is your primary duty then to the shareholders or ratepayers of Connecticut or your service territory? I think my primary role is to, to serve shareholders, customers, and employees as effectively as I can. Now, one of the things that I love about these kinds of questions is that it really speaks to what is top of mind in the person's head. And you can see it didn't even miss a beat when he said shareholders first. And I think that is ultimately the issue that we have here. So yeah, we're hanging by a thread. I'll keep you posted and see if this gets resolved. I have a feeling that when I publish this video, somebody at Comcast is gonna see it and probably try to work to rectify it quicker. But I can guarantee you, if I didn't do a video like this, it probably would stay like this for as long as physically possible until it gave way. Now, this week's wrap up is being brought to you by all of you. And I have some super chatters and super thankers to thank. I first want to thank Logi KGR, who made a gold level contribution on our live stream the other day. So thank you very much for your generous support of the channel. I also want to thank Ed H, DP, Elaine Duglo, Ridwan Aja, and Travis Cunningham. They all made super chat and or super thanks contributions to the channel since the last time we got together. And we also have some new supporters on the channel who also contributed since our last wrap up. Clean937 Samuel, Tony K, and Mark McNiff all contributed via the YouTube membership program. Rob Winterroud contributed via Patreon. And we have a bunch of new Floatplane supporters. Ruzog, Jira Ruferina Bills, and Jessassin all gave via that platform. And I wanna thank everyone who's been contributing to the channel this week and on an ongoing basis, and all of you who watch on a regular basis too, because all of those things equal channel growth. And if you wanna support the channel, you can. You can go to lon.tv support and make a monthly or a one-time contribution via my donor box page. We also support the YouTube membership program, Floatplane, and Patreon. We have other channels you can find me on, including my extras channel, where we've got unboxings and supplementary content. And we have my Amazon page at lon.tv slash Amazon shop, where most of my product reviews appear ad free. You can engage with me via my email lists. I have a weekly list that you can subscribe to at lon.tv slash email. And then we also have a digest list that you can find at lon.tv slash digest. That is a daily email. Basically, whenever I have a new blog post or a new video, I push it out in the morning via that daily email list, but you don't get one every day if I have nothing to say that day. We also have a store that you can find at lon.tv slash store alert. That's an email list where I will notify you when I'm about to do my next tech gear sale. And lately I've been doing those on whatnot, which you can find at lon.tv slash whatnot. It is a live streaming auction site and it's a lot of fun because we all get together and uh, I get rid of stuff. And what's great is that I sometimes find things in the middle of the stream to get rid of. And then we also have a bunch of giveaways that we do via Whatnot as well. And if you sign up via Whatnot, uh, you'll get $15 to spend with my affiliate link up on screen that you can spend with any seller on the site. And that is going to do it now for this week's weekly wrap-up. Thank you all for tuning in. I might be back next week with another wrap-up because I have some channel news related to my website presence and all that kind of stuff. And I know you all are interested in that. So we'll be back again with more stuff this week. Keep those questions and comments coming. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic KGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more.
And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv s.